how cute is this desk that I found at a thrift store? I got it for $12 and I knew it was perfect for an island flip that I had planned. So first of all, I decided to strip the top and then after doing that, I decided I needed a little more overhang for the countertop and started putting on the bottom, which was a piece of plyboard. I cut it down and fastened it. And the next part was the countertop. I got this really long board and cut it down to fit. Um, and I also got this beadboard or wainscoting panel to put on the back side to have kind of a decorative finish. So after I cut that down to size, um, I did secure that to the back of the desk to be the island. At some point I'm going to stop calling this a desk and start calling it an island. I'm not sure when that is yet. Anyway, so here we are going to attach the beadboard. Um, and while I'm doing this part, uh, I have to tell you a funny story about how I got this desk at the thrift store. It was one of those that um, the price tag had been taken off or never was put on or something. So I actually asked about it when I got up to the front of the store and I said, hey, how much is that desk? And they said, oh, it's $12. And I said, sure, I'll take it. And um, by the time I had already checked out and paid for the desk, there was a lady in the next aisle over who was um, ringing up her items and she said, how much is that desk? I want to buy it. And so uh, I, I felt kind of bad because the lady who was ringing up my items said, oh, she just purchased it. And oh, this lady was so bummed. I felt really bad, but um, I'm confident that she will find a nice desk or will have found a nice desk um, somewhere <laughs> but I did snag this one thankfully for this project so here it is with the countertop and you can't really tell but I actually need to do a whole lot of sanding on the top of this countertop um, but I was pretty satisfied with the little bit of overhang on the sides and here I'm going to show you how I fastened it with some metal brackets. I did put some glue on the top of the desk and kind of had a little bit of glue just to attach it to the boards, but then the hardware was these two brackets that I fastened it with. And here is the fun part of putting on the wheels. And there was my little helper on his wheels. <laughs> um, I was really excited about the wheels. They were, I did a little bit of research to find really easy rolling ones, but that were pretty low profile. So not to make this too top heavy. And I think it turned out pretty good. So here's what the little brackets looked like. They're kind of an L shape. And here's with the new rolling wheels. And the wheels definitely made this project go a lot smoother after I put them on because I was able to just wheel around the whole island. See, I think it's the wheels. It's an island now. And here you can see the work that I still need to do on that countertop. Um, but the other piece of the countertop wood, I actually decided to use as a little shelf in there. So you saw me put that in. And here I am going to sand this whole thing and get it ready for prime and paint. So here you can see I'm sanding down the edges. I wanted them to be really uh, rounded, just like a countertop kind of should be. <laughs> I don't want any little heads uh, getting the corners. Um, and I actually had a lot of unevenness. Turns out uh, I have a lot of skills and one of those skills includes picking the most warped boards at my um, local hardware store. So that was fun. Um, after everything was finally sanded, uh, I did a quick wipe out to clean up all the dust, anything uh, that was on the surface so we could get ready for the priming.
And here I am using the Ben Shellac uh, primer. I prefer the original, but I think this was the advanced synthetic uh, variety, which I don't care for as much, but Ben Shellac primer is definitely the best for, especially this project. I knew that it was all wood and I know that sometimes the color can seep through and I knew that I wanted to make it white and so I know priming is an extra step but it's definitely worth it especially if you think you'll have tannins coming through uh, coming through on your paint so just to be, be safe um, especially I recently learned that tannins can come through months like months after the original paint job um, it, it sometimes takes a while for them to seep through so that kind of concerns me and I just always want to be safe on the safe side especially if this is for someone else um, to you know you don't want them to find out in a few months oh the person who gave me this or told this to me or whatever did not print so I definitely wanted to do that part um, so here I am also priming all of the doors and I didn't do a whole lot to these, um, sorry, drawers. <laughs> Those are not doors. Those are drawers. <laughs> I didn't do a lot to the, to the drawers, uh, but I just wanted to give them a little, um, paper, like a liner paper on the inside after they did get painted on their front. Um, and here I am just continuing to prime the wainscot, the beadboard, whatever that stuff is. And I thought it turned out really kind of kind of cute, kind of a rustic farmhouse modern something look. I don't know. Um, but you can tell it's really starting to look uniform when it all becomes that one color. It's very exciting. And the top part I actually did prime as well because even though I used the hardwood for the top, I am going to put a finish on it that is not a stain. So. I will explain that later. The other thing I did was that I don't normally do on on this one. I did the roller. I did a really small roller finish. Uh, I did a coat of the white cabinet paint with the roller and I actually was really happy with how it turned out. And here it is on all of the drawers. I had some hardware picked out that I had bought separate from each other. So here I am trying to see, is this really gonna match? Because here are the drawer poles. Uh, is it gonna match the towel rack? So it's not exactly uh, the same color, but I think it might work. We're gonna see. So the next step after I put on that primer on the top, I did paint it with kind of a sandy beige sandstone or something was the name of the color. But this is this part is really foolproof. If, it just depends on if you want the lighter, kind of the lighter look. Um, I'm going for that um, pottery barn faux wood finish is kind of the 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 look that I'm going for. So I'm going to use this Rust-Oleum glaze, and I just used a, a brush to apply the product on. I love this. I love this product because you, you just put it on. You let it sit for a little bit and then you just use a dry brush and just kind of move it around to make it look like you have the texture of wood and you can put more on if it needs to be darker you can move it around more and take more off if it needs to be lighter it's really just just fun it's up to you make it look how you want and i have never really been disappointed with this but i will say you do want to use long even strokes because if you start in the middle it's gonna look like you started it in the middle so go all the way from end to end on this and you're gonna be really happy with the results And here's how it, it looks once you get it all on there. It really does look like wood grain, even though it's definitely not. <laughs> and I, one thing I did forget to mention when I put the two boards on top for the countertop, I used Bondo in between them after they were fastened to the top so that I could make a seamless finish. And then I did the primer over the Bondo after it was sanded down. 
So here's the review. Dun, dun, dun. And here's how it turned out. Thanks for coming along with me on this transformation. Just a reminder, here's how this little desk looked before. And here is the island it turned into. If you would like to like and subscribe, it would just make my heart so happy. I treasure each one of those and it really encourages me to continue on with these kinds of videos if you're interested to see more in the future. Thank you.